This is a continuing read of All My Broken Pieces. It was a book in the works between Cindy Watts, Chris Watts' mother, and a woman named Kathleen Houston. The book deal fell through for whatever reason. It never made it to print, but I am reading the leaked documents um, from online. And this is the Ford with Cindy Watts' writing. I will begin. All My Broken Pieces, A Story of Motherhood and Love and Loss, Cindy Watts. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Lewis Carroll. Why, why, why? Only God knows why. Kid Rock. I don't think even once, not when I was a little girl even, that I expected or wanted everyone in our country to know my name. Maybe every little girl dreams of being a princess and now an internet star, but they didn't have internet stars when I was a kid, and they don't have any princesses or stars at all where I always lived, except for those in the sky. If anyone had been interested or asked me ten years ago what I wanted, I would have told them that I already had it. A good marriage to a fine man and two wonderful children. By back then, I have to qualify and say that I mean back before my son married a woman that was wrong for him and began to lose himself, and we began to lose him as well. Our pain started then, and over the next eight years, our lives tilted downhill and became sadder, more complicated, and filled with growing amounts of unwanted drama and fear until we finally ended up here, at the bottom, in a damaged, grieving heap, broken into pieces. Two of our granddaughters are dead, the young woman who was our daughter-in-law is dead, and her family is devastated as well. Our boy is, is, is in many ways as lost to us as though he were dead. Our family is in rubble and the whole world seems to know our names and hate us. We just exist and try to breathe through permanently constricted throats, trying to find a way, any way at all, to go on living for what we have left, who we have left including each other in our new reality, which is simply moment-by-moment wreckage. I am not writing this book to ask for sympathy. I am writing it because there are always three sides to every story, hers, his, and the truth. Maybe I cannot know the truth any more than all the millions of strangers worldwide who seem to think they do, but I know some things. I know our family. I know my son. Or maybe I don't, and I wish to gain an understanding of him and his actions through this process. And to a degree, I know the story of the marriage that led us all here. I want to tell people about these things I know, at least. As to what I hope will come of it, well, I don't hope for much anymore. But no matter what you think of me, of us, remember this. Chris is still my child, and if you have ever had and loved children, then you wish to hold them and to comfort them when they are damaged. You wish to make it right. I can't make this right, and I may never hold my son again, never be able to comfort him. I can tell my story, though, or my truth, if you will, and hope for understanding. This is the story of us, before, during, and after the slide. It's the story of our son meeting and marrying Shanann, and what occurred during their marriage. It's the story of our granddaughters as we knew them and of our son's life during those years in their aftermath. This is about us, a group of ordinary people as we actually are, and not as those who think they know us or might wish to be. Because if what they say of us were true, then something like this could never happen to you or someone you love, and that reinsurance I can't give anyone anymore. As painful as the words of strangers are, those who know nothing of us but they, but feel they do, I hold no grudges. I might have thought the same as they do before, when it wasn't us, before meaning before my family became one of those that people read about and shake their heads over, and then immediately run to their laptops to say such things as, quote, I guess I would have drowned him at birth, end quote. Or if that wasn't personal enough, they speculate about whether it was me or my husband Ronnie who is the psychopath and whose horrible parenting, or genes, take your pick, or choose both, has twisted up our boy so bad that he was always destined to grow up to become a family annihilator. 
the worst, of course, the very worst, and I think what truly drove this book is the people who have written that my beautiful young grandson is going to grow up to be another Chris. God help you to find more kindness for an innocent boy and maybe to find in these pages the answer that there aren't any real answers. I mean, as to how this tragedy happened or what could have stopped it. Because can't you see that if we could have, we would have. Please, if nothing else, believe that. I'd like to say thank you, the reader, for listening to my story and for giving me your time as I travel this road again. Chris was a really good kid. It's not just me who says so. Everyone who ever met him and knew him said so too. He was very gentle and quiet and never caused us a single problem. He was an honor student who loved sports and made a nice life for himself in Morrisville, North Carolina after high school and then NASCAR Tech. Then he met Shanann. That ends The Ford by Cindy Watts. The next video will be reading chapter one.